Well, hey there, and welcome back to Heimler's History Teachers. Now, should we lecture in the classroom or should we not? Well, I have an opinion on that, and I'm sure you do too, so let's talk about it. Now, in this video, I'm going to tell you what I think lectures are good for and what they're not good for. And then in a second video, I'm going to tell you what I think the good elements of a lecture are. So get that clicky finger out and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Now, to be clear, I am aware that some districts make this decision for you and either forbid lecturing altogether or severely curtail the amount of time that you can devote to it. So this video is really for those who have a choice in the matter. So if you do have a choice in the matter, let me start by asking you a question. Why are we even fighting about this? Like, get a bunch of teachers in a room and ask them if lecturing is a good way to spend class time, and you better move out of the way because it's about to get crazy. Teachers have strong opinions on this topic, but why? It's just one delivery tool that we have in our toolbox, and I don't think I recall anyone having strong emotions about the other tools, so why this one? Well, let's think about a toolbox for a moment. The whole reason why you have a variety of tools is because every tool is designed for a specific task. Get a Phillips head screwdriver out and and use it to drive a Phillips head screw and you'll want to hold it up and praise it. It did exactly what it was supposed to do. But then try to use that same screwdriver that you were just praising to cut through a piece of wood and you'll throw it across the room and curse such stupid tools. Now, that would be an overreaction because, hey, that's not what that tool was designed to do. And if you try to use it to accomplish a task for which it was not designed, you should expect frustration and fury. So my thesis on this whole question of lecturing is this. Lecturing is a very specific tool created for a very specific job and it should only be used for that job and no other. Now I'm going to explain that in a moment, but first, I think that's why so many teachers and school districts have poo-pooed the lecture, because we've been using the tool in a manner inconsistent with its design. Okay, let's talk about what a lecture is good for, and in order to answer that, let's begin by considering what a lecture is not good for, namely, an expedient for content delivery. You know what I mean. The Mongol Empire was the biggest land-based empire in history, bigger than the Greeks, bigger than the Romans, and the way they did that was through innovative military techniques and diplomacy with a... Content delivery is not what a lecture is good for. And if anyone has a negative opinion about lecturing, my guess is it's because it was used to deliver content to students. But guess what? Not only is the medium of oral communication not well suited to ingesting complex didactic speeches, but it is way slower and more inefficient than other methods. My students can read about the Mongol Empire twice as fast as I tell them about it with my mouth hold because books are a medium in which complex arguments are better digested and they're probably going to remember it better too. So lecturing, in my opinion, is not a good expedient for content delivery. Like, we should never think about lecturing as a verbal version of a textbook. If that's what I'm doing when I lecture, no wonder the collective groans of 10,000 students ring out across the land. Okay, that's what a lecture is not good for, so what is a lecture good for? And here's my argument. A lecture is a tool designed to awaken the imagination of your audience to a new world. I know that sounds weird. Let me explain. Like I said, a lecture should not be a verbalized version of a textbook passage. Rather, it should be like a walk through the woods and all of a sudden you stop and your breath is taken away because in the clearing ahead, you see fairies dancing in celebration around a unicorn stamping its hooves. You pause, you catch your breath, and you just behold this unguessed at wonder. So my opinion is that a lecture should only be used when you want to help your students experience a new world that would otherwise be shut to them. Now I know that the best way anyone learns anything is by discovering it for themselves and drawing their own conclusions. But there are times when our students just need a guide to help them see something which is otherwise unseeable. Remember I said in the last video that there are two ways of learning to love something. You can have a direct experience with it and behold its beauty and all of its perfections and as a result, fall in love with it. And the second way to learn to love something is by watching somebody else love it. And so if there is something that makes my heart beat fast, something that gets me out of bed in the morning, something that my friends and my family know that once I get on this subject, I get animated and joyful, that is a world worth introducing my students to via lecture. There is no way that a lecture like that is going to put people to sleep. Like maybe you come alive when you're talking about civil rights or the magnificent city of Tenochtitlan or globalization or whatever. If so, that is a good lecture topic. And if you don't come alive when you're talking about it, neither will your audience. Now, I believe that lecturing has been cast aside not because lecturing in and of itself is bad, but largely because there's been so much bad lecturing. Here's the truth. You can only deliver a good lecture if you are a good lecturer, and that requires practice and skill. And look, here's where it pays to know yourself. Like, if you're not a good public speaker, then lecturing probably isn't for you. And that's fine. Remember, it's only one tool in the toolbox. It's a skill that certainly can be developed, but again, it's a matter of knowing yourself. Lecturing is not a moral imperative, but if you can do it reasonably well, it is a tool that just might help your students enter a world that they have never known before. All right, so let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you agree, disagree, whatever it is, I want to talk about it. If you want me to keep making these 
these teacher videos, then let me know by subscribing, and you know me, I shall oblige. Here's some more videos for you to watch in case you're into that kind of thing. Heimler out.